are doing some 3D integration. So as you could tell with my last video about the multiplane, uh, Harmony is a 2D software, but it is nested in a 3D environment, allowing you to uh, move around the 3D space and have your drawing cohabit with 3D elements. I won't speak about this 3D view and stuff. If you want to learn about that, go see the other video. Today we are focusing on handling 3D model in that 3D space. So 3D models in Harmony can be used in multiple different ways. Some people use them to trace over, some people use it as the reference to do their cutout animation, like to check out how it looks with a 3D model in their scene. Some people use it for a background. There's so many ways to use it, but how do we use it is what we're gonna learn today. So as usual, I'm gonna get rid of all I have here and start fresh. So today I managed to dig out some of my stuff from school. So I'm gonna go get my whale from my movie. And then when you import your 3D model, you have lots of options. So to know what files you can import, uh, I will link into the description below uh, to Loom's official documentation uh, where you're gonna learn everything about it. So what I have is an FBX and the first import I will do is the basic import. So I'll just import my model to my scene. And I'm using a very big 3D model on purpose because when you go online and you get all these free models, when you import them into your software, it's always going to be too big. So what is this? This is the inside of my character. So I'm gonna go grab it in the node view and uh, I will select my transform tool. If I click on my drawing layer, I have a normal little thing here. But if I click on my 3D model, I have a 3D patroller. So of course the green bar here is my Y circle. Uh, you also have the red circle, which is your X and Z. So you can move your thing around with the circle. If you press on the yellow square, you can shrink it and I'll turn it around like that. So it's very easy to just manipulate your object. So this is just a shell I was using in ZBrush to paint over it. So I only have the skin, I don't have any other pieces. But if you had a model with multiple pieces, you could actually kind of animate all of these little pieces uh, independently with pegs, which is kind of interesting. Sometimes it can be useful for uh, references. But as usual, if you want to move your character, you should actually put a peg on it, just like you would with any other drawing layer, because it's just basically another element layer. I put a peg on it and now what I have is a default like basic peg so I can just kind of move it around but I cannot rotate it or anything. If you want to rotate and actually use 3D you need to click on your peg and set it to 3D. And now you'll get the same little handle I had earlier. So if I have one keyframe here and I go into my timeline and I create another keyframe on my 3D model, you can animate your 3D model uh, inside the software which is very, very useful if you have like a car or a very complex uh, prop like a sword or an ax and you want to trace it in different step of your animation. So how is this useful? Uh, it will get useful once we start to draw. So I'm gonna use this drawing layer here and I'm gonna show you something very interesting. So if you draw something, you'll start to see that your drawing is not 3D. So your model will actually sometimes appear on top and behind uh, your character. And if I go look into my perspective view, you see that it's because my model is actually 3D, but my drawing is not. All right, so what you're gonna do to solve this is actually to take your art and bring it forward so it's always in front of your 3D model. So to do that, you take your drawing, you put a peg on it, and this peg, just like in the multiplane video, you'll be able to take your maintain size tool and just bring it forward. So you see, it's not changing the size of my drawing at all, but it's gonna bring it in front of my 3D model, allowing me to always draw and have it on top of my model. So now I put a keyframe, just be sure to put it at the beginning so that your drawing is always on top. And now, if I start over and I actually use my 3D model as a reference and I start to draw my whale character, I will activate my light table and then I can start to maybe draw my little character. He's, oh, they don't have a nose, that's a whale. So um, maybe I can use this to draw my little flippers and get my angle right. Um, yeah, because sometimes that's what is hard to do when you draw, like have all these like 3D um, depth in your drawing. And then if I go forward, maybe I want this, I will go get my uh, 3D model again to uh, use it as a reference. Of course, usually you'd have maybe a more expressive model than I had. I'm doing the best I can, okay? But uh, yeah, so you can just maybe use it as a reference to draw your character. And if I want it to be farther away, 
can then use maybe this pose to get my character. So sometimes it just helps for the angle a little bit. All right, so yeah, that will be it. <laughs> pretty great. Uh, usually it's used for cars, it's used for like motorcycle, uh, swords and stuff. I just don't have the 3D model available and yeah, I don't want to mess with like copyright issues. So I'm using my own. Amazing. But using 3D models like that is a bit, it's, it's a bit hard when you're not used to working in 3D. So it's okay. Toolbomb's got you. Uh, we have another options for you. I know a lot of uh, background artists that love to have Maya open on the side and take like screenshots of their software with their background. Take screenshots and import it like in Photoshop so they can like draw over it and have fun. But that requires you to have like two software. And if it's not Maya, if it's Blender or anything, it still requires to have two software. And you know how lazy I am. So I'm not gonna do multiple softwares today. So I'll start from scratch and I'm gonna go in file, import 3D models, go get the same one I've used before, and that will convert it to 2D, which is a very cool option. It will open and you'll be able to manipulate your uh, object in a very safe environment. So all you have is this view. You can uh, zoom in and out. You can handle your translation, rotation with numbers, which is sometimes a bit reassuring for people that don't know a lot about 3D. You can also change your focal length, which is uh, really great, especially for backgrounds. Yeah, like that. So if I have this model, I can render it to my scene. And now I have it in my scene. And if I want to move it around, I can just put a peg on it or just move the drawing. And then if I move it around, what I'm moving is an image. If I go into perspective, you have kind of a 3D thing, but if you turn around, oh my god, it's a lie. It's just an image. So this is exactly like if you would go to another software and just took a screen cap and paste it in your scene. But the magic doesn't stop here. <laughs> if I want to have another angle because I'm not satisfied with this one, so then I can like start over and go get my 3D model, right click on it, and then update my 3D model position. And it will reopen this box. You'll be able to like change the angle, render it to your scene, and voila, you can update it. So it's very great if you just want to sketch some things. Um, I'm really not good with backgrounds. So sometimes what I do is I just import like objects and backgrounds and I kind of trace over it to get the feel. Uh, sometimes you can also mix this technology with the guides of uh, Harmony you know, the perspective tool. So you can have a background and kind of find your perspective with these uh, perspective points to make your background and stuff. Very cool. I hope you learned something today and that you're gonna have fun working with some 3D models in your scene. So have a nice week and I'll see you soon for another video.